you're watching the Dynamic Machine University YouTube channel. Today, we're here at Modern Technology Machining, working on the brand new A20, and I'm gonna walk you through all the basics of what you need to know to set up your tools in this machine. Let's get started. Before we get started with the tool installation on this machine, let's go over a few things about the control, the machine's axes, and the tool holder stations in the machine. Starting with your tools on the main side, you have your turning tools, which are 1 through 5, your live tools, which are 6 through 9, and your ID working tools, which on the main side are 11 through 14, and on the sub side are 51 through 54. For the sub tools, all you have is 31 through 34. The turning tool you see displayed is in 31. Now on to the machine's axes and what they're called. In head 1, you have X1, which is also known as diameter in the preparation screen. Then you have Y1, which is known as core in the preparation screen. And Z1, which is known as longitude. With a subspindle, you have X2, which in the prep screen is known as center. And you have Z2, which is known as long D in the prep screen. Remember, I don't name these folks. Next, you have the mode selector knob. This is how you go from manual to auto, check to preparation to set the machine and run it. To see what mode you're in, simply look at the top left side of the screen to see what mode you have selected. For the majority of this video, we are going to be in preparation. Now that we're in preparation, I'm going to take a look at my mData page. This is the page that determines your material diameter, your position point, your part length, and a few other things. If you're setting up a job that's run before, then all this should be right already. But because this is my first job on the machine, I'm going to need to change my material diameter to half inch. Now let's set our cutoff tool, which is T1. To set this, hit T set, diameter, then press start. You will notice if you let go of start and the door is open, the machine will stop and the light will blink. So if the door is open, hold start until the machine's in position. This is what it looks like when the machine moves into position to set a tool in diameter on the main gang. While the machine's moving, if you look at the work position on your screen, you can see it moving down until it reaches the desired diameter, and then the menu will change. At this point, you will want to loosen the three screws that hold the wedge in place that locks your tool down. Now you will want to try to insert your cutoff tool, but my cutoff tool was too big to fit in the machine, as you can see. To correct this, go back to your screen and hit the right arrow key to make sure you're in diameter. If you're in diameter, hit the right arrow key again and select times 100, which is 1 thousandths per graduation on the hand wheel, and move the machine up until you're clear to fit your tool in. As you're jogging, you will see the machine move up. And once you get to a point that you know is good enough, you'll be able to fit your tool in. I figured about a quarter inch should be good for this tool. It's extremely important after you make your adjustment that you hit input and double check in diameter on the tool you have selected that you have input the proper data into that spot. Now, if you've gone far enough, you should be able to slide your tool in and push it down to the material diameter. You don't want to tighten it all the way here. You just want to snug one screw as to not chip out the insert. Then you will want to hit the wait button and press start, which will bring the machine up to the position point. This brings the tool right above the material, like so. Now you can go into the machine and tighten down all the screws that hold down the tool. A decent amount of torque is required here, but not too much to keep this in place. These wedges hold down the tool pretty well. Now let's set our turning tool, which is tool 3. Hit T set, diameter, then press and hold start. This will move the machine into position for tool 3 to be set. 
Once the machine is in position, you will need to free up the screws that hold the wedge in place. And once again, my tool will not fit unless I adjust the machine. So repeating the process from earlier, I'm going to want to double check them in diameter, go back over to 1000 per graduation, and adjust the machine up until the tool fits. Remember, after you make any adjustment like this, you need to go over and press input to make sure it is in the machine. Now that my tool can fit, I'm going to slide it down to the material diameter firmly and snug up one screw. Then I'm going to hit wait and cycle start to do a position point, then finish the job and tighten the rest of the screws down. Now we're going to set center line for our cutoff tool. So you're going to go into T set, core, but instead of hitting start, you're going to put an adjustment right into the machine. Here I'm going to hit minus 10 thou. I'm going to input it, and you'll see it go right into core. Now I'm going to back out of this menu and go over to cutoff. When you press start twice, this machine is going to move over to the position point for the tool you have selected. Once the tool has reached its position point, you will see the start light will be blinking. Now we need to feed out some material to face off. So select Z1 feed, right arrow key over, hit both times 10 and times 100 to do 10 thou per graduation, and then hit execute. It helps when you make sure the button you pressed actually stays selected. There we go. Now we can jog our material out and cut off an appropriate amount. Once you get the material fed out to a point you like, go back and hit cut off again, hold cut off, and then press start twice. This will begin the cut off cycle, which looks like this. The speeds and feeds for this process are all set in your M data page. When the cutoff cycle is completed, the spindle will stop and you will see it go from executing cutoff to cutoff machining completed on the screen. To check our tool center line now, we're going to want to hit wait and press start twice to bring the cutoff tool up. Now we can examine the end of the bar to see the nib we left from our tool being below center line. If you don't see a nib, simply lower your cutoff again and repeat this process. But now you want to add to your core and repeat this process again until you get no cutoff nib at all, like shown here. Now you know your tool is very close to center line. So now let's face off with tool 3 using the cutoff feature and see how close we are to center line. It's a lot easier to see how much you're facing off if you look through the machine at this angle so that way you don't face off too much. Right about there should be good, so let's run it. Luckily, this tool was right on center, so I didn't have to rerun the process at all. Now, onto the ID stations. You're going to want to insert your tool through the back and leave enough room so it doesn't hit the main spindle when it comes into place to be set. So we're going to need to establish Z is zero in order to set these tools. So I'll do another cutoff with the turn tool. So now, you're going to want to scroll down to the desired tool to set which is 13 in this case, hit T set, select diameter, and then hold start to bring it into position. Watch this carefully though, because if your tool's sticking out too far, it can hit. You'll notice when you press start that Z1 moves back. Then your tool will move onto center line in front of the main spindle, and when it gets there, you will see Z1 move back into the facing position. You will also notice the screen change when you get into position. Once in position, you can simply slide your tool to the face of the material. This will be Z of zero. At this point, I usually just tighten one screw down, and then, when I'm done, jog everything back and snug everything firmly. 
Now let's move on to our subtools. One thing you're going to want to do before setting your subtools is go and hit the right arrow key and select no interference. That way you don't get any alarms when you're trying to get into the interference zone. To touch off tools using a gauge block, you'll have to first go into mData and go down to the B work extended length and change that number to the length of your gel block. In this case, I'm using a one inch gel block, so I just hit one point and input and that puts the data into the machine. So now you'll want to select the desired tool to touch off. In this case, it's tool 31. So I'm going to select T-Set, Center, and hold Start till it gets into place. This will cue the machine to the proper position for me to jog it forward. Once it gets into position, I will then have the option to hit the right arrow key, go over to Long D, which is Z, go back over, select times 10, times 100, and now I can jog the machine forward. When using a gauge block to touch off, it's wise to go too far on purpose and then move the machine back as to not chip out your tool if you accidentally went too far. To move in smaller increments now, I'm just going to select times 100, which is 1000 per graduation, and move the machine back slowly. This will allow me to get pretty close with my setting. You're going to want to go until the gauge block slips right through. To get an even more precise setting, go to times 10 for 1 tenth, and then slowly work the subspindle back until you get the slip fit that you're looking for. Now that we know we're close, we can simply just input our data, and that will be correct. Now that we can see our data is right, let's hit the left arrow key to back out and hit M data and make sure we put this number back to the number it was before we got started. Before setting diameter for this tool, we're going to need to talk a little bit about the F dimension that you're going to use to get the number you need to go into center or diameter on any of these tools. This will apply to all boring bars on the main and sub and any OD tools on the sub. If you go to your tool manufacturer's catalog, you will see the WF dimension is the dimension from the center line of the tool to the tip of the insert. You will see when I look at the actual dimensions for this, I get 12.25 from the center line of my tool to the tip of the insert. So let's take 12.25 and multiply it by 2, which will give us 24.5. And then let's take 24.5 and convert it to standard so we can put it into the machine. So now that we know what our F dimension is, let's hit T-Set, let's go into Center, and input that data into the machine. It's important to note here that you might have to adjust this number depending on what size radius you're using on the end of your tool. But now T31 should be very close to where we need it to be to run parts. Now I'm going to show you how to touch off on the sub without using a gel block and using a piece of paper. You will need to have a part already ran and sticking out the appropriate distance on your sub spindle to do this properly. Whether or not you want to use a gauge block or a piece of paper like I'm about to show you is completely up to you. I showed you two different ways so you can decide. It's always best before setting these tools to go into manual and move the machine around into an appropriate position to make it as easy as possible to put things in safely. In this menu, you can move any axes you want, any way you want, to clear them to make this as safe as possible. Now that you have everything where you want it, you're going to want to tighten this tool down before you do the tool setting procedure. So now let's go back to our preparation screen and select tool 53 so we can touch it off. Let's also select no interference to avoid any problems here. Go to T-Set, hit diameter, and hold start till the machine gets into position. Once the tool is in position, let's right arrow key over and select long D for the Z axis, right arrow key back, select times 10 and times 100 to jog it close. I usually hand wheel it to about an eighth of an inch away from the front of my tool and then I will select a lower increment to jog in. Then I will select times 100, which is 1 thousandths per graduation on the hand wheel. Now, very carefully, 
I will jog it forward until I feel contact between the paper, the drill, and the part. Once I finally get there, I input the data, which you'll see go into length right there. Now we want to send our subspindle home. To do this, select B Retract, and then press Start to send your subspindle back home. Here you can see what that will look like. Now, last but not least, I'm going to show you an example of setting your live tools on the main gang. This example isn't perfect because the only drill I had at the time was too long, but I still feel I can get the point across pretty good here. To set a live tool where you want it, simply put it in the right spot and tighten the cap down. Your machine will come with the two wrenches necessary to tighten the live tooling down. You're going to need to find the flats at the base of the live tool to lock it in place so you can tighten the cap down with the bigger wrench. Before you go into preparation and hit T-Set, it's extremely important to make sure that your material is cleared for when the tool comes down. So just like all the other tools in the main gang, we're going to want to go and hit T-Set, select diameter, and hold start until the tool comes into position. As you can see, while this tool is coming down, had I not cleared the Z1 axis, this would not have been very good. So now we're going to have to jog the tool up in diameter. Just like before, we're going to want to go, make sure diameter is selected, go back over, select 1000th per graduation of the hand wheel, and jog it way up so it's clear. Once you get your tool clear, we'll need to jog Z forward so we can touch it off with a piece of paper. Once our tool is clear in diameter, we're going to want to select Z1 feed, then go back to 10 thou per graduation, and jog the Z axis out so it's underneath the tool. Now we can go back to diameter, back to 1,000th per graduation, and go down until we get a snug fit with a piece of paper. Now if we had had a normal length tool in the machine, we could press input here and the data would be put in correctly. But due to the fact that the drill is way too long, and you would never really need to drill that long in this machine, I can't do it. Well, that about covers it for the basics on touching off tools on a Citizen A20. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any ideas for future videos, please leave a comment below. And a huge thank you to Modern Technology Machining for letting us film on site. It is much appreciated. Thank you very much.